School bullying has certainly received a great deal of attention in the last two years. Tragedies have prompted schools from our area and beyond to come up with new anti-bullying policies. Many schools have also hosted training sessions for parents to help them deal with the problem. Unfortunately, Catholic schools are not immune to bullying. Terry Hegarty visited one local Catholic school and sat down with diocesan personnel to find out what is being done to eliminate this dangerous behavior. As schools across the Diocese of Springfield are celebrating Catholic Schools Week, diocesan officials recognize that there are some concerns, like bullying, that don't warrant celebration. While officials say that the incidences of bullying are less in Catholic schools, there is still a need to be vigilant to reduce the destructive behavior. But reinforcing Catholic teaching goes a long way toward reducing bullying. We're fortunate in the Catholic schools because, not that it doesn't exist, but it certainly doesn't exist to the same degree as it does in other places. And because of our teaching of gospel values, uh, we are able to teach respect and include it in that sense in our teaching. Massachusetts lawmakers last spring mandated that all schools address the problem by submitting to the state a formal plan detailing their policies for dealing with bullying. While the Catholic schools were not held to this mandate, Sister Andrea Suzuki says the four Massachusetts bishops felt that they were morally obligated to formulate a new comprehensive policy for each diocese. The Diocese of Springfield now has a new policy and is in the process of implementing it. Sister Suzuki says that her office provides ongoing support to diocesan educators. Well, we have the opportunity to meet with our principals frequently, and we know that we focus, our mission is that on respect for self as well as for others. So when situations arise, whether they begin with simple conflicts, whether they are other than bullying but might lead to bullying, we ask the principals and all of our teachers to immediately study the situation so that we can react appropriately. National statistics from the 2009 Indicators of School Crime and Safety indicated that one-third of teens reported being bullied while at school. 18% of teens had rumors or gossip spread about them, 11% were physically bullied, and 4% had their personal belongings destroyed by bullies. Over the last two years, the diocese has had two major workshops on bullying, one which hosted a nationally recognized expert on the subject. Many adults may think that bullying involves the big kid pushing another into the lockers. But bullying today is much more varied and subtle. It's not so much the physical bullying that we are concerned with, it's the nonverbals, it's the power struggles that happen between the social structure of, with students. Um, I think the, they call them gateway behaviors. The silent treatment, the um, gossip that they start with one another becomes so hurtful. It's also the repeating of this behavior that constitutes bullying. Under current diocesan policy, there is zero tolerance for bullying. Five years ago, staff at St. Stanislaus School in Chicopee implemented conflict resolution curriculum in all grades of the pre-kindergarten through grade 8 school. That whole sense of learning respect for one another, appreciation for different cultures and different backgrounds and accepting one another, that sense of being able to look at differences and appreciate them as well as to welcome others into our midst. It is estimated that only about one-third of bully victims in the U.S. report the bullying to someone at school. Many children are embarrassed or don't want to speak of the fact that they have been bullied. So our administrators, our teachers, should be more open to listening to what's going on and also to paying close attention, if you were, to be those people who are aware of it and give that time to our students. Today, kids text, check their social networking sites, and talk on their cell phones day and night. Bullies also utilize these tools, so cyberbullying continues long after school is out. It was reportedly this unceasing bullying that led two local teens to commit suicide recently. In April of 2009, Carl Walker Hoover of Springfield committed suicide, and in January of 2010, Phoebe Prince of South Hadley took her own life. Both experienced what has been described as relentless bullying. The Massachusetts Aggression Reduction Center at Bridgewater State University provides school programs and workshops on bullying prevention and cyberbullying education. They train educators and students. Grant Bernard and Mary Mahorniak 
went there for a seminar in 2009. We went with another school, Holy Name, and we learned other bullying that's going on in other schools. We learned other bullying that's going on in other grades. We learned how to deal with it. We try to get the younger kids aware of bullying, as well as our own classes, and we're trying to reduce it because every class has bullying no matter what. So that's what our whole purpose is. Today, Grant, Mary, and others at the school are known as ambassadors of peace. They meet at the school twice per month. We're trying to get some of them to actually help the younger children to understand what behavior is acceptable in our school and what kind of school we really want, uh, a school of respect and, and helpfulness, and to reward the behaviors that are good and kind. Kathy says that the profile of a bully has changed in recent years. We're learning that the stereotypical bullying model that used to be a bigger kid or a little less popular, maybe more insecure, is now not so prevalent. It's actually the more popular kids that are starting to be the bully. And parents, whether they are the parents of the victim or the perpetrator, play a key role. I would hope that each of us, student to student, teacher to student, student and, and the whole gamut, the, everyone involved really becomes totally aware of the harm that we often do just by words and by situations and that we change that. And we change it by again being more reflective, by looking at one another with the greatest respect that we can and live out our gospel way. St. Stanislaus School provides training sessions for parents as well. Reporting for Real to Real, this is Terry Hegarty.